Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. You've made it to another Worship in the Word Wednesday. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. Just lift your hands to the Lord and just begin to thank Him for bringing you through the day. No danger, no harm, no hurt in your right mind, activities of your limbs. Just thank Him right there. It's a simple song we're going to sing to the Lord, but before we do, let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us another opportunity to come together and to give you our very best in worship and in praise. We thank you for the word that's going to come forth tonight in power, that's going to bring deliverance, that's going to bring peace, that's going to bring direction. We thank you, God, that even now your presence rests in this room. We thank you for the love that surrounds us. We thank you for the joy that overflows. We thank you for all that you've done and the many wonderful things that you're preparing to do just because you love us. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray and we ace. We all say amen and amen. Come on, clap right there. Oh, oh, oh. You ready, Sean? Yes. Let's have a good time tonight. It's a simple song. It says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is. Yes, he is good. Say, so, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Let's sing, sing. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy.
start the track yet. Go to the floor for me. It goes, you don't know what he's done for me. Yes, sir. He gave me the victory. Yeah. I love him. I love him. I really love I love the Lord. <laughs>
of the Lord one more time. It's an old song that says, thank you say thank you. <laughs> you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to thank you, Lord. James, y'all lay out. Let's say you've been so good. Been so yeah. good. Better than I could ever be to myself. Yes, you've been, been so good. You gave me things that I didn't Deserve, but you've been good. Been Keep breath in my so body. Good. <laughs> hey. And I just want to thank you, Lord. One more time, everybody, say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank 
thank you, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We can't find more words to say. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord. And with these last 30 seconds, we'll say, I, I just want to thank you, Lord. One more time, you've been so. Everybody sing it with one voice. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Lord. For your unfailing love and your undying attention to us. Thank you, Lord. the track James last time say hey I just want to thank you Lord James you know why I thank him because he's a good good father who you are who you are y'all got to move with us come on y'all Mistake, Jesus. Perfect in all of your ways. You can do nothing wrong. Perfect in all of your ways. You're ever considerate to of all of us. Every hand lifted in the building. Those of you that are at home, just begin to lift your hands and begin to call on the name of Jesus. Because it is the name of Jesus that will make everything better. It's the name of Jesus that will cause demons to flee. It'll cause cancer to dry up. It'll cause high blood pressure to regulate. It is Jesus' name, the power of Jesus' name. And he says, greater works shall you do because we embody Jesus in us. And so just by us speaking his name gives us the authority and the power to call things under subjection. If you're ailing in your body with something, a pain, a sickness, begin to pray and to begin to call on the name of Jesus. Begin to speak to it. Begin to curse it. Begin to bind the hands of the enemy and cause your body to come under subjection. Cause healing to come over your body. There's some things you're going to have to do yourself because God has given you the authority and the power to do so. Glory to God. Are you glad to be alive tonight? Are you glad to be alive tonight? Thank you for logging on. Thank you for being with us tonight. It's our Worship in the Word Wednesday. And it's a powerful time. It's a great time to fellowship together. And I believe that as we go into the Word of God tonight, I believe that God is going to show us something, give us something that will take us even to higher heights and to ignite our faith in a way that it hasn't been ignited. I thank you for logging on tonight. Do me a favor, if you have just logged on or you've been on for the whole time do me a favor go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube go ahead and become a subscriber a follower so that way you can get alerts when we are live 
or if you are watching us on Facebook, go ahead and hit that share button. Let's get as many people uh, on to the service tonight as possible. I believe that tonight someone came tonight to receive a word, and I believe they're going to receive it tonight. I believe it's going to happen tonight. Somebody shout, it's going to happen tonight. I believe it's going to happen tonight. That thing that you've been working and praying about and crying about and fasting for, I believe you're going to get a breakthrough tonight. I told you this past Sunday that you have to think miracles. You have to think miracles. I heard Bishop Jake say this past Sunday, it's a faith thing. Everything, it's about faith. That's why he gave us, the, the he equipped us and embodied us with a measure of faith. And that faith also has to increase and but it increases as we hear so the more of god's word you hear the more your faith increases so your faith can never be on, on full because there's so many things happening to us in life that kind of depletes our faith so every time you hear the word of god your faith becomes ignited and i believe that as we hear the word of god tonight your faith is going to increase uh, increase and increase and increase how many are ready for their faith to increase tonight Thank everybody for coming out. We had a great time this past July 4th. You, if, you, if you missed it, if you missed it, yeah, we had a great time. We had a great time. Um, it was a phenomenal turnout. I mean, people come out for those kinds of things, fireworks and food and fellowship. I say thank you to everybody who, who came out to let that on, what was that, Monday, Monday evening. Uh, we prayed the heat away. You know, it kind of cooled down, so you were able to, to catch a breeze and, and not be too hot, and uh, everybody had a great time. Uh, we had some music and bands and DJs and had some raffles. Some of y'all won some, some money. Some of y'all won some, some gas gift cards, and we just had a good time. So I want to thank every volunteer, every person who helped plan it, everybody who helped put things together. Uh, I thank God for my team. I, I very seldom have to get involved. Y'all know me. I like to be involved. I like to help. I like to, to do the work. I don't like to stand over in the corner somewhere and delegate and I play on my phone. I like to be hands-on and helping. Uh, so it was a great time. We had a great time. Go ahead and get your Bibles and, or devices, whatever you may have. Uh, I, I, wanna, I, wanna, uh, I want you to turn with me to a very unread book, an uh, unread book in the Bible. Let's look at Philemon. Philemon chapter number one. Uh, you have to go to, it's right before Hebrews. If you know where Hebrews is, it's right before Hebrews and it's in between, in between Titus, Titus. So in between Titus and Hebrews, Philemon. And it's only one chapter, so we're going to focus in on two verses. Uh, the, whole, the whole chapter is, is so powerful, we won't be able to read all the verses, but we're going to focus on two particular verses. Uh, verses 17 and 18. I'm reading it in the NIV version, NIV version uh, 17 and 18. Uh, uh, when you have it, say, I got it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read. So, if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything charge it to me I'm gonna read verse 18 again because that's where we're going to parlay tonight if he has done you any wrong or owes you anything charge it to me anybody anybody ever anybody's ever had anybody do any, do you wrong anybody anybody ever done anybody have you ever done anybody wrong Oh, she shook her head. No, she said, no, I ain't never done nobody wrong. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <clears throat> he says, if he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. For the few moments that we have together, I'm going to teach or preach whatever you want to call it. I want to uh, preach a subject that God gave me. It's called, I'm about to get free. Let's say it again. I'm about to get free. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm about to get free. 
I don't want you to be, I know it's on the screen real proper like, but I, I, I feel led to say bout. I'm about to get free. Bout, when you're about to do something, that means you fed up. I'm tired. I, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm good on it. I'm over it. I'm about to get free. I ain't talking about this churchy church cliche. I'm free. I'm so glad I'm free. But I'm talking about really, 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 really being free. And when we get done tonight, I promise somebody's going to have the clarity, the clarity on what closure truly looks like. Some of us need closure on some things. You need closure and you don't understand what closure looks like. You don't feel like you know how you're going to get closure. Some of us have moved to other cities and moved from other states and left relationships and, 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 and you don't have, don't have a clear understanding of what closure is. And sometimes you feel like things are unresolved and there's a sense of, of, of disturbance and you don't feel a level of peace in your heart because something is left undone. But I, we're gonna talk about how a person gets closure and we're gonna do it the right way. Is that all right tonight? I promise you it's gonna be good. Uh, let's pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us tonight. Let this word be a fresh word unto our hearts and, and let us be led according to your spirit, God, so that we can walk in truth your precious name we pray amen on your way to your seat look at somebody find somebody and tell them i'm about to get free so uh y'all know bible study i like to it's context it's all about context everybody say context, context. gotta have context before you understand or receive revelation impartation and understanding. First of all, I know, uh, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm that I've taken you to Philemon, and we don't hear, uh, we don't hear often uh, this particular passage of scripture. We don't hear this book being uh, talked about in the church or in the house or wherever. This is not a book of the Bible that most people sit around studying. And I believe that it was the Holy Spirit that led me to it. And as I began to read it and study it and read it in different versions, I believe that uh, God began to give me a fresh revelation. And the reason why we don't go, uh, we don't really go here that often is because many people either misinterpret, misunderstand, or simply just miss. Let me say it again reason why people don't go to this particular book of the Bible and this particular story in the Bible is because they either misunderstand it, misinterpret it, or simply miss the powerful truth in this one chapter of Philemon. And truth be told, it hasn't uh, been preached much because I believe if this book had been preached properly in America and in the Western world, slavery, I believe slavery would have ended 100 years earlier. It would have upset the economic system of America and the colonial system worldwide, causing slavery to end because the billion dollar question, everybody say billion dollar question. The billion dollar question becomes how can I enslave my brother? This particular passage of scripture is talking about one man who had enslaved one man and had to be converted to now disowning him as a slave and now receiving him as a brother. Because the question is, if you truly have the heart of God, how can you enslave somebody that should be your brother or sister in Christ? This is not a preached book uh, and has been overlooked and omitted for a reason. Simply because it would have messed with man's money. It would have messed with the economic system and, and they want you to preach everything else in the Bible. 
but not something that will mess up their money. It's so powerful as it relates to liberation. And I thought it would be robbery to let the 4th of July pass and not mention that in 1776, when all them people sat in that room and signed the Declaration of Independence, over one million slaves were not set free. I love the fireworks. I love America the beautiful. I love it. I love hot dogs and hamburgers. Y'all know we even did it right here at the church. We blew everything up. Y'all should have seen it. <laughs> but let's not get it twisted for one second. When that document was signed, one million plus black African slaves toiled underneath the whip of white slave owners right here in the land of the beautiful. Because these Puritan preachers ignored this book right here. But now they're intrigued by it and we're gonna unpack it. I promise you, just bear with me. We're gonna unpack it in a very short period of time. So let's put this text in the context. It's, it's midweek Bible study so we already know we dive deeper into the text. This book is called uh, Philemon, but it should have been called Onesimus. Should have been called Onesimus because it's a letter, a one-page letter, that a man named Onesimus is carrying to Philemon. Onesimus was a slave. Key word, was a slave. Do I have anybody in here who used to be a slave to something? Anybody? Who used to be a slave to sin? If you didn't raise your hand, you used to be a slave to sin. You used to be a slave to lust. You used to be a slave to addictions. You used to be a slave to Hennessy. I know, I know, Hennessy. You used to be a slave to some, yeah, yeah. You used to be a slave to some weed. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. That's all right. I'm going to name a few more. I get to one of them. Notice the key word is you used, used to be, some of us, I hope, used to be. But Onesimus was in bondage. But what the context is telling us is that Onesimus ran. Everybody shout ran. ran. Onesimus ran. Touch your neighbor and say, sometimes you got to run. Come on, touch somebody else and tell them, sometimes you got to run. There are some people out there who will make you think that the Bible, the Bible itself is pro-slavery. But the people say uh, that, th th this is what people say that have not properly read the Bible. In other words, they read it with the wrong eyes. If they study Philemon, they will read that Onesimus is a slave who escaped and ran. Now, if you remember, a slave actually had to be purchased. So if a slave ran, then it was said that he was property on the run. And Onesimus was a, a runaway investment. Someone invested in his slavery. But not only did he run away, he stole some stuff. Before he got away, he got away clean, but he got away full. He got away with some stuff. Tell somebody you better steal some stuff too. Yeah, uh huh. You trying to figure out what Pastor Mitch talking about? When you run, do me a favor. When you when you on the way out the door, can you go ahead and steal some joy? Go, go ahead and steal some joy while you're at it. Do me a favor and steal some peace. Because some of us need some rest, some rest at night. Some of us need some peace when we go on a job. Somebody needs some peace when they get home at night. Do me a favor and steal some love. Some of us walking around in hatred and anger, and we need some love when we leave. But when you run away, you got to steal some love. Because trust me, the devil is stealing it from you. You got to snatch it back from him and say, no, 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 devil, you got to be quicker than that. Because if you're going to run, by all means, don't run empty-handed. The same thing happened when the children of Israel ran. Remember? 
They didn't leave Egypt with nothing in hand. You're not going to just pimp me out for 400 years and send me out with nothing. The Bible says the Israelites left with gold on top of gold that they borrowed from the Egyptians. Now they borrowed it with no intentions of returning it. But it wasn't theft because Pharaoh got rich off the Israelites back. So he ran, he stole, and somewhere along the line, he ran into Paul. He ran, he stole, and he ran into Paul. He ran right into a conversion experience. In other words, Onesimus runs into Paul and is converted to Christianity. It's okay to run from bondage. Some of us have been in bondage to some things for too long. And I came to tell you tonight, I told you this past Sunday, it's time to tell the devil you quit. Because some of us have been working with him and serving with him and listening to him and talking to him and having conversations with the devil for far too long and you got to give him your pink slip. Tell him you quit. And I ain't never coming back because it's, you got to run. If somebody is trying to beat you upside your head physically and verbally, I give you permission, run. You do not have to stand there and be no punching bag for nobody. <laughs> Sit there taking verbal abuse. Get thee behind me, Satan. I'm running right past him, slapping you upside your head up against the refrigerator. Run! Well, I'm going to wait for him to calm down and I'm going to go in there and have a conversation. Get up out of there. Calling you outside your name, treating you like a low-down, dirty dog. Get out of there. He don't realize what he has. In some cases, she don't realize what she got. Get out of there. Run, everybody shout run. Run! This idea that we have to stay in permanent bondage to be a Christian is false teaching. Because Onesimus realized that he couldn't take it no more and he ran. Poverty, I'm running. Poor mindset, I am Audi 5,000 running shoes on. I am out so fast. I told you, poor is passing over opportunities repeatedly. You've got to stop passing over the same opportunities to give, the same opportunities to tithe, the same opportunities to sow, the same opportunities to serve. You got to stop passing over them because it creates a poor mindset. You got to run from that and run from people who have that mindset. If they're not trying to push you into a mindset of prosperity and ownership and trying to get into a, 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 the right mindset, you got to run away from them. I'm running away from sickness. Got to take every pill under the sun. I'm running away from it. Living in fear. I'm running away from that. Keeping me confined to this little bitty box. I am breaking out of the box. I am breaking away from bondage. You're not going to beat me up. Tell me I'm no good. Tell me I ain't got nothing. Tell me I ain't going to be nothing. I'm running away from it. Because you are built for it. Look at somebody and tell them I'm out. Run. And then while you're running, While you're running, don't get me twisted now. While you are getting ready to run, you got to make up your mind. I told you last Wednesday, you have to make up the mind. Make a decision. I'm going to get out. And then get out. You cannot go until you make the decision. While you are running and about to run, don't forget that Onesimus stole some stuff. So when before you get out of there, do not forget to grab a few things on the way out. You can't run without no little money. Some clothes and some food. You got to have something. But in his running, somehow he ran into Paul. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice glad they ran into Jesus? 
I don't know about you. I'm glad I ran into Jesus. Growing up in church, I used to hear people say all the time, I'm glad I found Jesus. Anybody heard that? I'm glad I found Jesus. But we barely hear that anymore. And I don't know if it's because we stopped letting people stand on the mic and testify before church or what, but they realized that they was just running. And they weren't looking for him, but he was looking for them. He had you in his line of sight. While you was running away from the devil, he said, good, I'm glad you're running away from him. I'm going to run and hopefully that you run and bump into me. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I bumped into him. I bumped into him. Because I'm the person that deserved for him to run right past me and say, no, nah, I ain't messing with you. The same thing happened to Paul on the road to Damascus. Y'all know the Bible. I ain't got to preach it to you. But he wasn't trying to find no Jesus. Jesus ran into him. Same thing happened to Moses at the burning bush. He wasn't looking for God. He just ran into him. Same thing happened to the disciples. Matthew was at the table collecting taxes and Jesus just ran into him. Ain't that just like Jesus? Won't he come right to your tree? Zacchaeus wasn't trying to talk to Jesus. He was just trying to catch a glimpse of him. And Jesus ran right up to his tree. Wherever you are, wherever your tree is, Jesus will come running to you. Did he not come right to you? You ran smack dab into him. I don't care if your tree was at the liquor house, the crack house, the whole house, the trap house, the poor house. Some of you was at a house party and he found you, delivered you, saved you. And some of you have been running for Jesus a long time and you ain't tired yet. Can we just take a few seconds? Do y'all mind? Can we take a few seconds and just give my King of Kings and my Lord of Lords can we just take a few seconds and honor him tonight and thank him for finding us? I can't hear you. Just come on, celebrate him. He found you. You found him. You wasn't looking for him, but he was looking for you. He picked you up off the crack floor. He picked you up off of somebody's bed that you shouldn't have been in. And he saved you and delivered you, gave you another chance. So we give him all the glory, honor, and the praise tonight. He saved your life. So you can experience what true freedom is. Liberty and freedom is not just talking about it, it's actually being about it. He instantly ran into Paul and was converted. Ran into Paul and was converted. And now we begin to see here how valuable, how valuable Onesimus was. The reason why Philemon wanted him as a slave because he didn't understand that he was valuable. Anytime someone puts you in bondage, it's because they do not understand how valuable you are. It has not hit them yet just how truly valuable. Do I have any valuable people in here? Do I have any valuable people online? Come on, yeah, let me know. I'm valuable. I'm valuable. Type that in the chat. I'm valuable. And can't nobody else take it from me. I am valuable. Shout, I am valuable. And it's time for you to start walking in that valuableness. Stop walking with your head down. Feeling like because you made some mistakes or, or because, because, because you lost something or because you don't have what it is that you need to have. You don't have everything that you want and desire that you're not valuable. The only reason why you haven't gotten what you needed is because somebody just hadn't realized yet. Maybe somebody. It's time for you to stop wondering when somebody's going to realize it and start telling yourself, I don't need nobody else to realize that because I realize it. I 
understand it. I came to church on Wednesday night on midweek word, on mission worship in the word Wednesday, and I found out that my man of God told me that I'm valuable, and God is telling you that you're valuable. Every valuable person in here, every, every, every useful person in here, make some noise for God tonight. Philemon could not understand. He had not received the revelation that Onesimus was valuable. And sometimes the people that you have relationships with, there's some people that you're married to. There's some people who, who you might be the you, you might be their daughter or you might be working for them. And there are some people who have not realized your value yet. So they keep you right where you are. They keep you on this on this on this uh, on this on this lower position uh, pole because they don't realize what you possess. Sometimes they don't know that you have actually grown. They don't realize that you have actually exceeded what their expectations are. And so they, they keep you, I wouldn't say as a slave, but it seems as though they keep you in a space and a place where you would uh, not realize that you are better than that. And it's almost like manipulation to a certain degree. I wouldn't call it that, but, but for lack of better terms, it almost can be like that. And what, they, what it is is the enemy has kept the blinders on so they don't see. But what I have come to grips with is that sometimes that it has to be for an appointed time. Sometimes God will hide you somewhere in the cliff of the rock until it's time to be revealed. And I believe that right now we're in a season where we're not just receiving revelation, but God is pulling back the covers. He's yanking back the wings of the eagle and he's saying, I need you to soar. I need you to stand out above the rest. I need you to walk around knowing that you are valuable. Look at somebody and say, I'm valuable. I'm valuable up in this piece. Yeah. Stay right there, Sean. I like that. And now we begin to see that Onesimus is valuable. What you've got to understand is that Onesimus runs into Paul, but you've got to know where Paul was. Paul was in prison himself. Sometimes it will be the low place. It will be the low place, the unexpected spot where someone that is of equal power will recognize how valuable you are. A man with great power was a prisoner not of walls but a prisoner of Christ. Recognized the value that Onesimus had and began to spend time with him converted him to Christianity. Philemon was converted by Paul prior to Paul going into prison. Then Philemon enslaved Onesimus. Why is it that Philemon could not convert Onesimus? Could it be that you cannot convert someone who you enslave? If you keep them in bondage, you will never convert them. Most of us convict people. That's why you can never convert them. If you encourage them, then you can convert them. He finds Paul. Gets hooked up with Paul. And Paul realizes just how valued a servant Onesimus was. Onesimus, his name actually means useful. His name means key, critical, vital. So once he's converted, Paul is always looking for new talent. And so now he became useful to Paul. 
If you understand anything about Onesimus, if you read about Onesimus, Onesimus probably had, he could write. He could no doubt read. He could no doubt communicate very well. So it's safe to say that he was useful to Paul. And during this time, the book of Philemon was written. Paul was in jail. He's on house arrest with the ankle monitor on, awaiting trial. So we can't go nowhere. And don't get it twisted. He has his whole team with him. If you look at verse 23 and 24, he announces everybody who's with him. Luke is with him. Mark is with him. A bunch of names that I can't pronounce. But his whole squad is with him. But this is what he does. He writes this letter. And he sends it back by Philemon. Why? Because he has to get closure question for you what do you do when God sends you back to the place and the person or the situation that had you in bondage I told you earlier that it's okay to run and to get free but it's no good to only be free physically and go and do you not be free spiritually and that's what happens with us as believers, as Christians, as humans. We get away from people and places physically, but we do not get free spiritually. You cannot just be free in your body and not be free in your soul. A lot of folk may not live in the same conditions, but wherever they end up, the same conditions keep following them. You left Thelma and then you married Aunt B. And now you're in the same situation. You got to catch last Wednesday. They didn't know what I'm talking about. But now you're in the same situation that you were in when you were with Thelma. Some people leave a church and, and join another and you're dealing with the same stuff you dealt with at the last 14 churches you left. If you ever find a perfect church, don't join it because you'll probably make it imperfect. Because although you may be physically free, here's the revelation, is you're not free until you're spiritually free. Until your soul, your inner being is set free. Once you are physically free and spiritually free, now you can go get closure. But our problem is we a lot of times seek closure before we're really free. And that's how people mess you up. The only reason why you running back to try to get closure is because you haven't totally released it. Here's my point. Onesimus was already physically free. And Paul had his whole team with him. So he could have sent any one of these people that were with him back to Philemon. So my question to the text is why is he sending a former slave who ran away and stole back his old master, excuse me, and stole and sent him back to his old master? It's got to be because of closure. But closure, you got to know that closure only comes after you are spiritually free. If you're not spiritually free, don't go get closure yet. Say it's not time. Bishop preached a sermon this past week. He said timing is everything. At an appointed time, at an appointed season, it's when you go back for closure. This is going to help somebody. I'm, I promise you it's going to help somebody. People say that they're free, but my question is, are you? Are you really free? Anybody that talks to me and tells me, ah, I'm free. I'm just so glad to be free. My question is, are you really free? Because if you're really free, you don't have to announce it. You'll walk in freedom. Your spirit will ooze out freedom. 
the things that used to get you disturbed won't disturb you no more. The person who you so-called free from can walk in the room and you're all good. You can walk up to them, speak them. If you see, see what I have learned is that 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 cell phones, mostly mostly uh, this technology world, they have put this thing on your phone now where you can block somebody. But 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 here's the, here's the problem with blocking. If you gotta block them, you're not really free. I should be able to see your name come across my caller ID. Answer it and say, hey, God bless you. And it not affect my spirit. I've already run from you. So I'm physically disconnected. And I've already disconnected my spirit. So I'm, I don't really have to be angry with you no more. I don't have to be disappointed with you anymore. I don't have to be discouraged by you anymore. We have to stop letting people who do so little for you mess with your emotions so much. If you are totally free, you don't have to say a word. Because if you're still being triggered by something, that somebody may do or say, or in this, in this world, they may post something on social media and you can't stand to look at it. The honey baby, you not free. Newsflash, you still in bondage to it. A lot of people today seek closure before the wound is closed. A scab is not a scar. A scab is on the way to being a scar. A scar is left when something is closed, but a scab is left when something is still healing. I came to tell somebody tonight that some of us, the reason why you can't get closure yet is because you're still in your healing process. And God says that once you receive this word, you can begin your healing process. And your healing process may take five weeks. It may take five years. It could take five minutes. But whatever the process time takes, once that scar is healed, or once that scab is healed, then the scab falls off by itself. When it no longer needs, when it no longer needs any more healing because the wound is now closed. Can I help somebody who's trying to really get free spiritually? Is it all right? Can I take a few minutes? Can I help somebody? They may be online. Y'all might be all good. I mean, let me talk to somebody online. Sometimes you may have to go without an apology. I know that's tough. Sometimes somebody may not give you the apology that you need. And you got to be okay with it. Sometimes you may have to deal with the silent treatment for just a while. Because I hear a lot of people say a lot of times, man, what they did, you know what you did, you really trigger it. That really triggers me. It gives me anxiety. I don't know what I got to do. I, maybe I got to go take a pill. That is because you are not healed. There's a lot of church folk walking around still broken still scabbed up because they keep trying to rip the scab off and get closure before it heals a scab and a scar has to go through the process of healing on its own and in this season that we're in God is accelerating us God is going to manifest some things God is going to show himself faithful but he also says you're going to fall down you're going to get hurt and you're going to need to let the process happen so you can get healing. And once you are healing, then God says, I'm going to send you back so you can get some closure. Because the closure is really not for you to need it. It's really for you to see how healed you really are. Sometimes the, 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 the testing season is for you to go back and, and, and confront the thing that hurt you. 
Anybody walking around with some undealt with hurt? I'm going to help you tonight. The undealt with hurt is just like the unpreached book of Philemon. Most of the time, people don't want you to be totally healed. And they could be right there in the house with you. That's what's so dangerous. They don't realize that the enemy is using them. That's why it says men not to always pray. Because they may not mean you no harm. They just don't know it. But healing a lot of times has to go through a process. But I promise you this right here. At an appointed time, once God sees that you're healed, he'll send you back for closure. I hear a lot of people say that really triggers me. And believe me, I, I deal with it too. Even when it comes to the death of my parents, I'm still triggered, especially when I have to go to the hospitals or funerals or, or deal with things that, that are related to death because I'm not completely healed yet. I told you Sunday I'm in a better place than I've ever been in, but I'm not completely healed. When everybody else was praising and thanking God that I accepted the role of the Vita pastor, I had not been able to grieve. I jumped from the funeral car and the burial ground straight to the pulpit. Having to go in the same office that they worked in. I've never had an opportunity to step away for a period of time and heal. Most of my assignment is helping others heal. So I promise myself that we're going to heal together. Because I came tonight to tell somebody about the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm about to get free. Is there anybody with me tonight that says, guess what, Pastor? I'm about to get free. I'm not about to hold on to this stuff no more. I'm not about to sit here and wallow and be sad. I'm about to get free. Freedom is contingent upon you making a decision. Some of you left cities and states because you wanted to get free and you may have left physically, geographically, but now it's time to begin the spiritual freedom. So when and if God sends you back to get closure, you can do so with a clear and clean heart. Some of us can't walk in the agape love that we're supposed to walk in which the Bible tells us to walk in agape love and we can't because we are still hurting. Paul says, you got to get free. Paul says, okay, you're physically free, Onesimus. And now that you've gotten spiritually free and although I have other people that I could send on this assignment, I'm going to send you with this letter so you can have closure. I was talking to a brother not too long ago about healing spiritually and he, he, he wanted me to pray with him and, and talk with him and, and hear him out and I'm listening to him and he told me how, how, uh, how shortly after he, he got a divorce, he was uh, working overseas for a period of time and he walked into this restaurant, this famous restaurant that somebody kept telling him you need to go to, go to this restaurant and he went for the first time and, 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 and the sign on the building was in the native language of the place where he was at. But once he found out the translation was actually his ex-wife's name, he said he had to get up from the table and he left and went somewhere else. And he told me that it had affected him so bad that he could not eat in a place where it was con connected to what his, his ex-wife's name meant. And he admitted it was because he was not healed. He was being petty. Some of us are bit walking around being petty about stuff that you can't change. And he realized that he wasn't healed yet. And the wound was still fresh. Here's the, clo the clucks of the letter. Paul is saying, Philemon, you're, you're my cur covert, convert, excuse me. 
So essentially, he tells Philemon in the letter, you owe me your life. You owe me your life. He was writing from jail all because of ministering to people like Philemon. He's suffering behind bars. Paul right now is suffering behind bars for sharing the gospel with Philemon. And he tells Philemon that you owe me your life. So Paul is saying, when we pick up the, the text here, verse 17 and 18, Paul is saying, so, so, so whatever he stole from you, and whatever it cost you to purchase him, I'm getting ready to help you. All that, I need you to charge it to me. I need you to weigh that against your own soul because I need you to receive him not as a slave. But I need you to receive him as a brother when this time you go back for closure. This person these people, these situations, they're going to receive you the right way. Why they include this in the gospel? It's because Jesus said, yes, you owe me a debt that you cannot pay. I'm going to pay a debt that I do not owe. Let me say that one more time. For all my churchy folk. You owe a debt that you cannot pay. And I'm going to pay a debt that I do not owe. This is the gospel. And they include it in this canon. Because it's a human picture of what God did for us. Here's the blessing in the text. He sends us back free. Because whom the son sets free is free indeed I wish I had some free people in here that would tell Jesus thank you for setting me free high five somebody and tell them I'm free stomp down on the devil's head and tell them nah 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 I'm free I promise you I'm closing I'm closing, but I want to give you this. In 1706, there was a New England minister in Boston, Massachusetts, and this guy was given a slave by his congregation. His congregation gave him a slave. This is America, yeah. And then he has the audacity to name this slave in 1706, Onesimus. After the slave in the Bible, who Paul had already set free. How deep this level of white supremacy goes. Matter of fact, in Boston, there's a school named after this Puritan preacher. And so what happened was smallpox broke out and this slave whose name is forever lost in the, in the books of history. He was from Ghana and Africans, they had for centuries, for centuries taken smallpox from one of the sores and they would poke it and they would scrape it onto the skin of people and it reduced the death rate from 15% to about 2%. And even though Onesimus was a slave, he was so useful that he told the white man, how not to die. And Onesimus was declared one of the best Bostonians of all time. What are you saying, Pastor Mitch? I came tonight to tell you, yeah, little you, I came tonight to tell and to declare over your life that not only are you free, but you are useful. I don't care what that job says, you are useful. I don't care what that business says, what your profile says, what your bank account says, you are profitable in Jesus' name. I don't care what that baby mama says, you are a blessing. When you go to work tomorrow, your supervisor and all them other staff, they're gonna see you as useful. 
resourceful. Then when you get home from work, your spouse going to see you as valuable. When you come back from summer break, your teacher is going to see you as beneficial. We are free. So you're better now. You're stronger now. You're going to be wiser than you've ever been. I want to pray with somebody tonight. My prayer is not that you're going to be free. My prayer tonight is going to be that you realize that you are. You're not going to be free. I know I said it, but the Holy Spirit just corrected me. He said, no, you're not going to be free. You're not about to be free. Quentin, you're already free. Somebody needed to hear that tonight. You've been letting people think and make you feel like you are nothing. But you're free. You're free because the Bible says, whom the sun set free. Last time I checked, the sun is bigger and better than any person on this world, earth. He gets the last say so. And he said tonight, Trisha, you are free. You are useful. You're valuable. And nobody can tell you any different. You cannot be. connected to the things that you did wrong or the bad decisions you made and think that this is what defines you. God says, what I call you, I call you blessed. And he says in his word, all of my promises are yea and amen. I don't know who needed to hear this tonight, but my prayer tonight is that you receive the word of the Lord that you are free I don't need you leaving this moment the devil is gonna gonna catch you at home or gonna catch you on the job he's gonna try to tell you different he's gonna try to steal kill and destroy the word that you've received tonight you need to snatch it back from him and tell him no 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 devil God said I'm free thank you God I thank you for this word tonight God, I pray now that as we connect our faith together, as I ignite, I connect my faith with, their, with theirs tonight, God, that, that we'll begin to realize that we're already free. God, you have already told us in your word that we're free and that we're going to walk in this freedom. None of our situations, none of our, our past, none of our present conditions are going to have a hold on us ever again. We break free from fear. We break free from sickness. We break free from poverty and lack and fear. We walk in our total victory. Your word tells us we're more than overcomers and we are victorious. The devil is under our feet. And every time we take a step, we push him down further with his stupid self. And we declare that he is defeated. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them you are free. Come on, tell them you are free. And while you're at it, say I'm free. Come on, be selfish about it. Say I'm free. I'm free. Listen, tonight, I want to encourage you tonight. I don't want to, I don't want to beat it over your head. You already know, because this is a giving church. I thank God that, that we have no lack. We have no, 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 no issues. We have no, no, no problems. We are rolling in blessings. Pressed down, shaking together, running over. Anybody that feel like you're running over, you're running over with blessings. Come on, shout and make some noise. I'm running over with blessings.
You got to prophesy it to yourself. My bank accounts are running over. My stocks are running over. My, my investments are running over. My portfolio is running over. Everything that I have, everything that I put my hands to is blessed in Jesus' name. Make that declaration. Everything I put my hands to is blessed. Everybody, everybody make this confession. Everything I put my hands to is blessed. Everything I put my hands to is blessed in Jesus' name. I encourage you tonight to sow. There's a few ways to give. You can text to give. Text 73256. Text 73256. Your amount, whatever it is that God puts on your heart. So many of you are giving online. I want to say thank you to every tither. I want to say thank you to every giver. We have increased this year from, from this year, from the year, oh, excuse me, this time last year, we have actually increased. Thank God we've increased. We're increasing as we go. And I believe that it's because of your heart and your willingness to trust God and to obey God in this season. Because he loveth a cheerful giver. I said he loveth a cheerful giver. I give, I give because I believe that being a giver warrants me to be blessed. You don't deserve a blessing unless you are a giver. If you feel like you're being blessed and you never give consistently, trust me, that's on borrowed time. You're living on borrowed grace. Because at some point in time, that's going to come, that rug is going to come from right up under you. Because it's going to teach you that you need to be a giver. So every unselfish person, every person who says, God, I thank you for giving me the ability to sow. Every time I come to the house of the Lord, I come with a purpose in my heart. I'm going to sow into the kingdom of God because I believe that my blessing comes from me being a blessing. Amen. Let's pray over our seed. Thank you for the seed, God. I thank you, more importantly, for the seed sowers. Thank you for the mindset, God, that I want to plant. Every planter deserves a harvest. Lord God, I pray now that they will receive the harvest 100-fold because they have a cheerful heart to sow. Thank you for it. We praise you for it. Father, you are kind, so we're going to be kind. Father, you are faithful, so we're going to be faithful. Father, you are loving, so we're going to be loving. We pray Psalm 91 protection over each and every one of us until we meet again. Keep us, cover us, protect us. In your precious name we pray. And every heart say amen. Listen, I'll see you this coming Sunday. We're diving deeper into our Never Back Down series. I promise you, this part you're not going to want to miss. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. See you Sunday. God bless you.